So today's lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about the immune system and how your body fights off infections. Uh, the immune system is also, when it overreacts, is the uh, causes allergies. Um, a little review from last week. Uh, remember, pathogens are any organism that can cause diseases, including viruses, uh, like COVID-19. Um, your immune system is made up of white blood cells, and they are, in fact, white. Um, here you can see their comparison next to red blood cells uh, in the size. And we have three types of white blood cells that I'm going to focus on. We have B cells and helper T cells and killer T cells. If you go to the doctor, um, these are called CD4 and these are called CD8. Um, but we're going to start with talking about B cells and uh, how they kind of start your body's immune response. B cells generate antibodies. <clears throat> and one way to think about antibodies is once your body encounters something like in this diagram, a bacteria, a B cell, when it encounters it, then creates an antibody that will actually attack to attach to any other bacteria that look like that. And that kind of marks them for destruction by the rest of your immune cells. Um, so in the next few months, uh, what the federal government is hoping to establish is an antibody test to see who's been exposed to COVID-19 and is now immune. Um, that will hopefully speed up the duration of this isolation. Um, so antibodies last for a long time. When you get a vaccine, what a vaccine often does is it causes your body to generate these antibodies um, so that you are immune from those diseases. Um, basically, it gives you the disease without ever having the symptoms and you have immunity. Uh, memory B cells are ones that provide long-term immunity from disease. So like if you had, uh, say, whooping cough last year, um, first of all, that could have been prevented with vaccinations. Um, whooping cough generates antibodies, which uh, will provide immunity for years afterwards. Um, some things that they have noticed is, strangely enough, if someone contracts measles, they are now thinking that could actually wipe out some of your antibodies for all of your other immunities. But long-term immunity is caused by memory B cells. T cells, uh, there's two types. The CD4 recognizes pathogens and infected cells and activates the immune response. It's kind of like a hall monitor recognizing who's in the hallways that shouldn't be. Um, and what the CD4 actually does is if, um, if it encounters a pathogen, it basically turns on the rest of your immune system and sends it into overdrive. Uh, with HIV, HIV causes AIDS. Um, and when someone has AIDS, it's the result of the virus has actually wiped out almost all of their CD4. So they kind of lose their alarm system. Killer T cells called CD8 are the ones that attack and destroy infected cells and other pathogens. Um, memory T cells remain in the system and help prevent future infections as well. So ways that we can reduce pathogens are hygiene, including handling of food, um, washing hands, and um, other exposures. Uh, right now, as you're seeing, we're all being told to stay home, uh, reducing public exposure. Um, when we have diseases that we can treat, uh, bacteria, I remember, are treated with antibiotics. Viruses can be treated with antivirals. Um, those did not exist when I was your age. Another way we can reduce pathogens is vaccination. So one of the research goals at CSU right now is to find a vaccine for COVID-19 so that we can further reduce the spread and hopefully get out of this isolation. Um, here's an example of an outbreak. Um, this was the result of measles ending up at Disney and then getting on airplanes and going all over. Um, this measles outbreak was rather problematic. We had another measles outbreak that was even bigger last year. Um, that one was uh, actually hit the Denver airport as well. Um, measles is a horrible disease that is very preventable. One of the concerns with measles is it's highly contagious. It's R0 is 11. Uh, another thing we have to battle with diseases are um, stigma. Um, we often try to cast judgment on those with the disease uh, with terms like someone is innocent or guilty or clean versus dirty. Um, usually at this time in the school year, we would be doing an activity in class where uh, to mimic the spread of disease, you would all have little cups of water and one would have a chemical that would react to pink dye. Um, usually when I do that lab, 
I record what everybody is saying and put it on a PowerPoint at the end because you will see people use things like, oh, you're dirty or yay, I'm clean. Um, and stigma has always been a problem with disease. Uh, the picture you see on the bottom is Mary Mallon. Her nickname was Typhoid Mary. Uh, she was a food sa service worker in New York and um, she ended up being incarcerated for decades because every time they released her, they found her continuing to cook food. Uh, what we now understand was the uh, she was tried by public media, basically, and um, she was not the only person spreading typhoid fever. Uh, we now know of typhoid fever as salmonella typhus or salmonella. Um, but they made an example of her because she was an immigrant, sadly. Emerging diseases we already talked about last week. These are diseases that evolve, appear, or uh, become a new concern for humans. Um, this is one thing that the CDC used to do a lot of work on internationally to control epidemics. Uh, one that we've been concerned about for many years has been Ebola. Uh, in the case of COVID-19, we're still figuring out the mortality rate. Um, it is low, but it's still too high. Um, some strains of Ebola had mortality rate of over 90%. Uh, one of the scariest ones was Ebola Zaire. Uh, we also talked about the causes of, uh, of emerging diseases, including diseases evolving, um, zoonosis, which is jumping from one animal to humans, which is the case for COVID-19 that seems to have originated in bats, as well as chimeras, where two viruses join together to form a new virus. Um, for evolution of disease, we have a lot of things like antibiotic resistance, um, including misuse of antibiotics. Um, in the case of swine flu of 1918, technically called H1N1, um, that one just was a bizarre mutation that became far more lethal with no warning. Um, zoonosis is jumping from one disease to another. Um, Possible animals are limitless. Bats seem to be a pretty common source of zoonosis because they're mammals with a high body temperature and they live communally. Um, most flu strains originate usually in birds or pigs. Um, fleas carry bubonic plague. Um, Lyme disease is spread by ticks, but it seems to have originated probably in deer, but we're still figuring that out. Um, Ebola is another one. In the case of HIV, um, it originated in chimpanzees and jumped into the human population about 100 years ago. A zoonosis increases with more human contact. Um, that includes things like habitat destruction. Uh, they've seen increased rates of Ebola outbreaks and other zoonotic diseases as we're tearing down rainforests to put in palm oil plantations. Uh, palm oil is used as a food additive and skincare product. Um, some feedlots have been linked with outbreaks of zoonosis, as well as bushmeat, which is eating other primates. Uh, here is uh, an example of a chimera. Um, what you actually see with HIV is it's two different uh, viruses that fuse together. One came from the red-capped monkey uh, and the other from a greater spot-nosed monkey. Um, but viruses are just chains of DNA, but they can become linked together to form new viruses. Um, these are ways that we control epidemics when they break out. One of the things is trying to get vaccinations uh, out whenever possible. Um, another thing is treatment. Um, diseases that are under treatment tend to be less contagious. I mean, it's as simple as if you give someone cough syrup, they're going to cough less, and that's going to spread less droplets of a virus. Um, wiping out diseases whenever possible and controlling vectors. Uh, vectors would be animals that transmit the diseases. So an awkward one is the bubonic plague was actually caused by rats in Europe. Um, it was the fleas on the rats. This is what people wore during plague times to, uh, these were the doctors to protect them from the plague. At the time, they thought it was a smell of death that spread the plague. So these paper mache masks were filled with cotton that was covered with essential oils to make it smell nice. But by random chance, covering their entire bodies, including wearing leather gloves and long sleeves, protected them from the fleas. At the time, they also thought that it might be witches causing the plague, so they killed all the cats. This was not the best solution because cats eat rats. As they killed off the cats, the rat population skyrocketed, which then caused more plague in regions. What ended up wiping out the bubonic plague in Europe was the introduction of another rat that outcompeted all the other rats, but this rat 
happen to not carry fleas that would spread bubonic plague. Reservoirs are areas where the disease lingers. Um, this is Kidum Cave in Kenya. This is where a lot of Ebola outbreaks have all had their source of origin. Um, and the problem they're now realizing is this is probably being spread by bats as well, encountered with chimpanzees. Um, because bats can fly hundreds of miles, they can't just blow up this cave because the, the bats will end up somewhere else. So that was your very quick little lesson on the immune system. Um, so what's going to go on as, as you get infections, if your body fights it off, you will have antibodies that will provide you immunity for other things. Um, so there will be a little brief online quiz uh, for you to take after this as well. Have a good day.